Quantum Conversations, your portal to the inner realms. Access infinite possibilities, infinite mastery, and infinite love. Mind-expanding, heart-opening conversations with some of the greatest spiritual teachers, luminaries, and healers of today's world. Usher in new earth by living in your sacred heart. Quantum Conversations is brought to you by AcousticHealth.com, home of music from the universe, online healing retreats, and this program. Claim your free registration to daily shows at AcousticHealth.com. AcousticHealth.com, your portal to the inner realms. Our program starts shortly. Welcome to another Quantum Conversation, brought to you by AcousticHealth.com. I'm Loren Gailey, and I invite you to sit back as we enter the quantum realm, that space of the greater part of you. It is your connection to infinite possibilities, infinite potential, and infinite mastery. And today we are talking about New Earth once again, as we are here, and all of you who are joining us are indeed dedicated to anchoring, activated, activating, and being New Earth. And we thank you here for joining us. This is really a journey into formlessness, and my next guest is on the leading edge of quantum anthropology. She is seer and scientist Elizabeth Wood, and she is here with us for yet another quantum conversation. Elizabeth, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome back to the show. Thank you, Lauren. I always love talking with you. I always love talking with you, too. My cat does, too. She just walked into <laughs> my office, and she is joining all of us. And all of our beloved furry ones and winged ones could be popping an appearance in all of our realities, as too, as we uh, join in this very sacred space. Boy, Elizabeth, can you feel it? The It, it feels like things are way different. Times have changed. Yeah. There's a new energy. And we were just chatting a moment ago. It's a big upgrade all the way around. Yes, absolutely. And one that is actually a bit surprising. <laughs> because now New Earth, Mother, Mother Earth, is embodying much more than just the fifth dimension. We have more dimensions that have come online than that. So now we have six, seven, and eight coming available in ways, and this will mean contact. This means communication. This means the embodiment of the angelic realms, of the realms of the masters, of the realms of the light talkers. And mm -hmm. just the other day, I had an I had an encounter with an eighth dimensional being, a light talker, and it was one of the most beautiful things I've ever experienced. And this is going to start happening to average folks more and more. I get these great emails and reports right now from people saying, I've never been able to see energy before, and now suddenly I have this incredible experience. Really? Amazing. Yes, I, absolutely measurable. I'm always into measurable results. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yes, the so scientists that you are. we have these measurable experiences. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we have these great measurable experiences showing up. Okay, so you've got us riveted now. Tell us about your experience. Tell us yeah, what I that really, was like. I, <laughs> it was so amazing. So eighth dimensional beings are these very tall, very formless looking, and this is this is how they appear to me. And so, um, you know, that... In, in reality, we know that that might not be actually how they look exactly. So I've always seen them as these very formless, tall um, beings of bright light, and they would speak in rainbows to each other. 
but I've never had one actually talk directly to me. And the other day I was meditating and here came this beautiful being and it changed entirely. It didn't look any more like a tall, formless looking being. It turned into sort of a half spherical shape and it presented itself in front of me like this beautiful living grid of rainbow light. And I was really amazed by how good it felt to just be in its presence. Incredible, brilliant, beautiful, shining light. And I noticed that whenever I would think of something or have a feeling that this being would respond to it. And so I thought, well, I am i don't really know how to communicate to this thing, so I'm going to experiment. And I projected sort of a thought like a an appreciative, reverent welcome from my heart to this being. And it just sparkled. It responded back to me, and I could feel it and hear it. And it was, this is something out of like a crazy movie, but it's so <laughs> real. And so it, it sparkled, and it began to um, then project back light to me, and it came into through my heart, and then I was able to translate this very pure light language into words that I could hear in my mind. And we went back and forth discussing things, and as I just presented myself to this being, the being was able to respond back with complete and total understanding and, and pure knowledge and wisdom. And it gave me basically um, just validation that the blocks I'm working on are the right ones to work on and that the work that I'm working on presenting and sharing this year is the right work. And it was so wonderful. It lasted 30 minutes. And it was the most magnificent conversation I've ever had. And physically felt so totally understood and beautiful. And I really do hope that more and more people will get to meet them. Yes, and so that is why we raise our vibration. We clear out this old baggage. I know we can't say it enough, right? Clear out right. this old baggage <laughs> so that we then open up to these other aspects of our soul embodiment. And that vibration allows us to see these energies. It's our light body coming on, right? That communicates yeah. with. And you've also done work on your pineal gland. So when you were seeing this or having this experience, was this something in meditation or did you see it with your no, feel this it with was your with eyes? my actual 3D eyes, not even my psychic ability. Were you in a house, in a room? Yeah, in, I was in, in my bedroom space? just hanging out. In your bedroom? No, I was just relaxing and the kids were playing in the other room. My door was open. And how did it come in? Yeah. Through the ceiling or the corner of the room? Or did it just It appeared appear? right in front of me. Yeah, it just appeared. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, I know amazing. we're all saying, cool. we want that. <laughs> that would be so... <laughs> yeah, I want so it what for everyone. State, okay, so what state of consciousness? What were you doing? Um, I tend to sit and think a lot. And I was actually thinking about all of the classes I'm teaching this year because I'm mm. bringing through a lot of information this year that I have had hidden away. And um, I hid it away because with my master's work, over 10 years of college, I developed a functioning prediction model. A functioning prediction model. Okay. Which this is going to pique the interest of a lot of sciencey folks out there because supposedly nothing like that exists. And that's not true. (laughs) It's in my Mm. closet. Mm -hmm. Um, So... I uh, finished college, and my my teacher pulled me aside and said, basically said, "Look, unless you unless you don't want to get into a whole bunch of trouble or something like that, you're going to have to keep this hush." And I did have many friends pull me aside and say, "Look, people are going to come after you if they know that this is um, if this exists." 
I was so frustrated and downtrodden to learn that this beautiful work that I'd created and brought through me, I mean, it really wasn't mine. It was, it belongs to the source field. Mm-hmm. Um, that this beautiful work would have to be in a closet. And, you know, I also trusted that when the time was right, I would know. So it sat in the closet for 10 years. And mm-hmm. this beautiful work deserves to be utilized by all of these wonderful people who are looking to create real change in their lives and want to apply all of their mystical knowledge to their lives and to their communities. But they get they need tools to be able to do that. And these are the tools that I want to share with people. I want to give people the basic foundation to create real change. The model that I created and the methodology, the method itself feeds into the scientific model, which is a theory. And this is a theory about cultural change. And this change model basically pinpoints exactly how change works for human culture. And human culture, you know, it starts with the individual. So you personally have your own specific culture of Lorraine, and I have my own culture of Elizabeth. But us together, then, we have another layer of culture, and onward up to the global human species. And change can be implemented at any level. And, of course, with the right tools and the right way to organize information, which is very complex cultural information, you'll be able to implement deeper, more profound, and very vivid change that you'll be able to measure. This, to me, is what this whole year is about. Finally, getting out of the front lines like I have been and coming into a different level of mastery where others are being called to take my place at the front lines. And whomever is going to be called there, well, something's going to pull them out to bring themselves out to the front lines. So a lot of the people I talk to, because I do tens of, you know, hundreds and hundreds of sessions a, um, a year, thousands. And lately, I'm hearing all these people saying, I'm, I've reached another level. It's time for me to get out there. I'm a little freaked out and terrified, but it's time for me to get out there and interface with the public in a new way. So everyone's getting called to the next step, to the next party. And for me, it's teaching this, basically, this new branch of science, quantum anthropology, but to a, an audience who desperately seeks transformation and change, and they want to apply their multidimensional knowledge to 3D world. I feel that's actually what the reset's all about, is being able to embody all these higher realms of thinking and be able to bring it to the 3D, not leave the 3D behind. I feel that's our job, is to bring it to the 3D. And we want to see it transformed human race. And so how do we help to create change? Well, it just so happens, that's what I'm an expert at. <laughs> yes, okay, so we're bringing it to the 3D. Absolutely. That is a theme as well. We're all feeling it, this call to step up and the, the resetting and the refreshing and the revamping um, and the upgrading. We were chatting about even the machinery in recent months, in the recent six weeks. The machinery has upgraded, and this is going yes. to continue. And so what this means as we apply it is to always be in this heart space with the mind. And you talk a lot about that in your teaching. It's the three minds. And so yes. I want to make a mention that we're going to go deep into some of your teachings today and have a chat about it. But like you said, this is a lot of knowledge and a lot of wisdom. And you actually spent a good part of a year creating programs that are actually in your special offer that help people with all of a variety of topics that deal with this. Yes. And so uh, I love it that the, it's the next level for people. 
to, it's almost like a train the trainers. And I see that too, where yeah. people are this change that they wish to see. It really is, it's, it's almost like we could use the phrase, when push comes to shove. It's almost that energy where, okay, if we don't do this <laughs> with ease and grace, we're going to be shoved into doing it. Right? Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. And all the baggage, all the junk, the density in this field and with the earth, people are finding that the problems that they've had, the blocks, the density is actually multiplying before their eyes. And it's a, it's because mm-hmm. Mother Earth and Source Field is saying, hey, since you didn't attend to this <laughs> before the big, huge solstice gateway, we just want you to remember that, by the way, you have this giant bag of junk in your field. <laughs> and so we're going to make it, you know, multiply until you attend to it, until you can't stand it anymore. So pay pay attention to that as yeah. the listeners. Attend to, attend to how your problems seem to multiply lately. And yeah. don't give up. <laughs> don't freak out. It just means that whatever needs your attention is going to get your attention big time now. And that's a blessing in in disguise <laughs> um, when, when one trash bag suddenly turns into 20. Um, but that's okay. That's okay. There's ways to shift density. And one of the things that I point out is that as we're sh- moving towards formlessness, that means being able to live with a universal state of mind, a galactic state of mind, a global state of mind, and of course many different layers of reality, being able to maintain all of them at once. And that's really hard to do unless (laughs) you're willing to be the commander of this energy, to command energy. Is our is our path? We are commanders of energy, and that's absolutely foundational. So when you take it seriously and you say, "All right, I want to be a commander. I'm not going to be this slave anymore. I'm done. I want to be free. I want to be sovereign." Then that mm-hmm. means you're going to take up that that moment, saying, "Okay, I want to command energy." Then, of course, comes in the methods to do so. But the desire, the willingness to do that, the willingness to say, that's what I want. I'm, there's not going to be any obstacle that will keep me from getting there. That's got to start first, that motivation. And people that find themselves when they're covered in 20, you know, giant trash bags of density, <laughs> mm-hmm. they don't feel very motivated. And that's okay, too. That's an obstacle on the path. Yes. You know, we're going to take some callers. We're going to, I would like to invite the (laughs) listeners. Before we get there, though, I just want to give our callers instructions on how to ask you a question because you're almost like this ninja of slashing (laughs) the baggage, right? Getting rid of these blockages. And I want to just say that um, as you were speaking there, uh, first I want to say how the callers can jump on and ask you a question. If you're watching us on YouTube or on the webpage, you want to go to the webpage, AcousticHealth.com, and click on Live on Air and join by web call. There's three options to join. Join by web call or phone, and you will be able to raise your hand to ask Elizabeth a question. We are really here to help with any extra baggage or blockage that you need to really break free of. So if you're on the web call, you can raise your hand, or you can hit star two to raise your hand. But what you're talking about there is um, something that I noticed as well. And it was very prevalent. And it was actually a time loop (laughs) that I created in my reality because I was not able to show up in a way that honored my truth, allowed me to speak my truth, and deal with that right there with love and compassion. So instead of um, dealing with the situation, I chose to maybe ignore it or be aloof from it. Well, that came back. It was probably nine and a half weeks later. 
and it came back and it was the other person was actually mirroring everything that I felt, how I was offended and hurt. And this person was mirroring those same feelings back that I did to her, which was very interesting because I saw exactly how I created that time loop. And this is exactly what you're talking about. If we are not able to, if someone offends us or hurts our feelings, if we're not able to respect that out of love and grace and speak our soul power to say, that hurt me, then we're going to witness, right? And this this goes for all aspects. So share a little bit about that because it really was a time loop that just came back to smack us. Exactly. Yeah, because it was still there. It needed to be addressed. So it, like a boomerang came right back in because there was an important, big, huge lesson in there, right? So, for example, when I helped splash trash bags and stuff, <laughs> yes, um, I like to have people kind of sift through what's in the bag first because that's really valuable. That tells you a lot about the journey you've been on. And mm-hmm. there's there's an incredible amount of story involved in that. And, you know, a lot of teachers, are always, they say, you know, don't get stuck in the story. That's true. But instead of getting stuck in the story, I say, follow the thread. What part of yourself has been frozen and and traumatized and is still in your subconscious in time, you know, they didn't go anywhere. That part of yourself is traumatized and they didn't get their needs met. And so they're going to actually run the show until you meet their needs. And by looking through the baggage, you'll find the thread that leads you to those parts of yourself. We call them frozen children, but they're oftentimes not children at all. They're adult parts of ourselves, too. Mm-hmm. Um And that's very key. And it also helps you find, for example, what are the programs that run? Programs, Mm -hmm. the the negative programs, the self-hate programs, the programs that teach you how to, for example, only value everything according to money, which is not real. Or, Mm -hmm. for example, use energy without being mindful. Those are programs that we're that are literally programmed into our DNA that make us good slaves, to be constantly afraid of death, to believe that we can't know who we truly are, that we can't know our own souls. These are programs that are very insidious, and they rule us right now, and we're breaking them down. This is the last vestiges of the matrix. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. We get this all the time, right? When is this clearing going to be over? And you're right. The word insidious is um, a, an operative word. There are some that go so deep, 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 yeah. deep. And it's good to know that they are the last vestiges as long as we're aware, right? That's right. And awareness yeah. is, 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 is a majority of the work. Yes, awareness and willingness. And then recognizing, well, if there's these programs, well, what's the opposite? What's the opposite of it? Which kind of leads us into, you know, (laughs) some other things in those bags, too, are polarities. For example, one that's been coming up a lot lately for many of my beautiful clients is scarcity versus generosity. Mm -hmm. And a polarity feels like a hamster wheel. When you go one direction, and oh, it's too much, like, I, I can't, I... I can't give so much away. I can't keep over-promising. I can't be so generous all the time because now I'm drained. So I'm, you know, and now I don't have enough, and now I feel like it's all scarce. And then they go the other direction, back and forth, back and forth, and they just spin and spin and spin. Or worthlessness Mm -hmm. and arrogance, that's another one. People are terrified of being arrogant, so they go into such deep worthlessness that they end up in complete total victim mentality. And it rules Mm -hmm. their life. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right? And yet and yet there's all these opposites. There's there's the source field is infinitely equanim it's based in equanimity. It's everything in the source field has infinite value. Everything in the source field is intimately connected to one another. 
I discovered this this uh, idea of the program around the misuse of energy, the mindless use of energy, while I was scarfing down a can of ravioli one day. <laughs> Called my ravioli story. But it made me realize suddenly, my God, I've literally been programmed to do this, to eat mindlessly and not think about how much hard work the earth and the people and the animals and the plants put into this incredible can of cold ravioli. <laughs> yes. There's a meditation. There's meditations yes. on that. Meditations on Absolutely. eating, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. That's mm-hmm. what you have. Mindful, mindfulness. Absolutely. Mindfulness. That's the field, that's the five fields of limitation and limitlessness. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the, the, the fifth one that I didn't mention was time. People are really, um, confused about time because they're constantly thinking about the past or the future. And they leak all this energy out. That can be another troublesome program that might be in that bag as you sift through it. Yes. And then you mm-hmm. get to dissolve all that density. You get to go deep into the emotional body. You get to mentally understand it, yes. That's mental processing. But then going into the emotional body and checking, where is this in my body? The body is this incredible machine that can do so much. And its ability to hold on and maintain specific energy because it thinks that it's helping you is is amazing. However, when you step into the commander role as the soul in charge of this body, then you get to take all that responsibility back and your body gets to serve you better because you're actually going to tell it what to do. And I call that heart commands. The command center of the body is the heart because the heart field can communicate to all the cells of the body and the field is created by the heart. So when you're commanding energy and you're deciding that you don't want any more of these trash bags in your field any longer and that you understood it well enough now that you've been able to learn from that lesson, which is very key, now it's time to command it out. And here, Lauren, is where it gets tricky. Because I'll get people call me and they say, well, I've been clearing for years Mm -hmm. and never seems to go away. And I'll always ask the same question, did you replace the energy? And most people Uh. will say no. And so physics, you can't leave a void. You have Uh. to replace the energy you shift out. And that's often the real reason why clearing isn't done right, because it has to be replaced. And that's then you won't have it come back. Really, okay, that's really important. Thank you for sharing that. Um, that I didn't really realize that either. That and so it's yeah. the opposite. All right, so we're going to watch you do this with some. Okay. And actually, <laughs> what we're going to do, everyone, be patient because at the end or or later in this episode. We are going to be able to command our energy. Elizabeth, I want you to lead us on a little um, process or a meditation where we can really command our energy. That's really empowering. First, though, let's attack some baggage and some luggage that is no longer needed. These are blockages. So I want to remind anybody who has typed in over the Q&A, that it's best if you voice your question to Elizabeth. I think she's able to like laser light, get in there and dismantle it and really help you shift in a mini way. So I, again, am going to point you to go to AcousticHealth.com, today's live on air show page, and connect by web call. It connects you right over the computer or you can join by telephone. The phone number will pop up right there for you. Right now we're going to go to the web caller, Carla. Hi, Carla. Do you Hi. have a blockage you need Elizabeth's help with? Yes, yes. Can you hear me, Laura? Um, we can hear you slightly. If you want to speak a little closer okay. to your computer, that's better. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Hi, Carla. Can you hear me now? Better. 
Yes, yes, I can make out what yes. you're saying. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. Hi. Hi. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Okay, so I've been really listening and with a lot of attention to what you're saying. And um, actually, I heard about your, uh, your heart uh, commands, and I tried doing this with love. Uh, because there's an issue that's coming up for me. Um, it's my it's, uh, little thing on my left hand. It looks like wall or near the nail, and I've tried to, you know, to clear this and then say what you, what you, um, and also follow the instructions of trying to fill this with light and love, but it's, um, for some reason it's not working. Could you please help right. me? What, what is this? So I believe you're... So I believe you're saying that you have an infection um, of some sort on your left Not middle finger on your hand, correct? Not an infection. I, I didn't want to give it a name. I think it's a problem with the bone. With the bone right near the, the nail, you know. It's on his middle finger. It looks swollen, but it's not an infection. I just don't want to give it a name, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, I see. Something there. Yeah, I don't seem to, I can't seem to work it out on myself, you know, by myself. Yeah. Okay, so, so first off, the placement of this issue is important. It's on the left hand. And that's telling us that there is some message that you're meant to receive around spirituality, especially in your relationship with spirit as it pertains to your body. So when things tend to happen on the left side, it's because you need to examine closely, what is my spiritual issues coming up? If it starts happening on the right side, sometimes that means to attend to your relationship with the physical. This isn't always the case, of course. But I'm sensing that this is important for you to examine. Yeah. And then, furthem furthermore, with the left hand, it's also, you know, your your own foundational practices. So it sounds strange that we would be getting into things like that with a sore hand. But the, everything is connected. There's always emotional, spiritual, physical things going on all at once, not exclusively. So to unwrap this, why isn't it going away? Well, that's partially why. You're going to want to address, you know, what daily spiritual practices do you have implemented? Make sure you're meditating and pr emotionally processing every day. Make sure you have some kind of grounding ritual every day. Get barefoot on the planet or take some salt baths. Take a, taking very good care of your spiritual life. That's first. Then lastly, um, I think that what's happening with your hand as I'm examining it, it can be help, it can be alleviated to some extent by consuming some colloidal gold. Colloidal gold is an ancient remedy for exactly what's happened to your finger, and it can be used for many many different healing properties. And colloidal gold is quite safe. If you're only taking about a tablespoon a day, that's perfectly fine. And what it will do is it's going to help relieve the swelling and the pain. It's going to shift out whatever's um, problematic in that joint, especially the joints. Um, it's going to help clear your mind. It's very healing. And I've had a lot of different, very high-vibe people be very drawn to colloidal gold right now. I think there's a good reason for that. It's going to help you protect your DNA help you receive more light. So it's going to cover a lot of different bases that are very important for you. Does this resonate with you? Yes, yes, I think it does. Because I, but I've been asking questions and I don't seem to get answers. And when you, I, when I just heard you in the beginning, I felt a little disappointed with myself because I don't seem to, to feel the energy, like you're saying, people feel. I don't know if there's anything wrong. What am I doing wrong? Because I'm there. No, that, that's okay. That's just oh, the journey. I that's all right. I think, I I'm think, be, be, listen carefully to some of the practices that I'm going to teach today. 
And what you're going to be able to have happen for you is enough density will get shifted out of your body and your DNA that you're going to be able to start to feel energy within a few months. Be patient and be persistent with shifting and commanding energy. Now, here's the deal as well. We inherit these bodies, right? And it's kind of like you inherit a house. But it's full of all this junk when you inherit it in the first place, and it's all the trauma of our ancestors. You know, there's great-great-great-grandfather's anger problem over there, and there's, you know, great-grandmother's sadness over there. And Source is in the driveway with a giant truck full of grace and light and saying, hey, I have all this new stuff for you, but I need you to make room. So when we systematically tackle this stuff. We're tackling it for our ancestors, for our genetic lineages, as well as the planet and our entire species. And of course, we get to reap the personal benefits of that clearing as well. So have hope that you can feel energy. I have no doubt that with enough shifting of density out of your embodiment that you will actually get to have many of the things you've been wanting to come online come online, such as psychic ability, being able to perceive energy outside the self, being able to feel energy, and being able to have divine knowing, that intuition come back online for you. And so I think that with this work, you'll be able to get reap the benefits. Okay. Is there something Very that good. I can feel my energy field that could assist uh, any other recommendation you have? You can feel that I do, or not at this time. I think for now, focus in on the foundations of your spiritual practice, and mm-hmm. make sure that you go ahead and work with gold as something precious to help okay. your embodiment at this moment. All right. Mm. Okay. 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 Thank, thank you, Carla. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very thank much. You. You're very welcome. Okay. All right. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, Let's take another caller before we move on. Let's go to Belinda on the web call. Hello. You're unmuted. Hi, hi, Belinda. Hi, Lorraine. Hi, Elizabeth. Do you remember me? (laughs) Of course. How are you? Good. Thanks. Oh, I'm doing well. Thank you. That's why I wanted to talk to you again tonight. Um, because you did so much for me when we had our session. I, I'm so, so glad. With that. Um, but I'm having, I keep hearing all the time from light workers all the time, they're talking about our throat chakra and how there's so much change going on. And I got to tell you, I thought I'd ask you because I know how good you are at helping me and other people with their physical problems. I am coughing so much is there anything i can do about this throat chakra change going on yeah let me take a look oh sure sure let me take a look okay all right so this is good for everybody to hear yes humans have created this brand new environment that never existed before called the house (laughs) and (laughs) <laughs> and the house is quite an interesting place. It's the playground of these little bugs called dust mites. And these little dust mites just, they love it in our houses. They It's like heaven because they just basically have food showering down onto the ground for them, bits of hair and skin and all kinds of random things. Hmm. And these little mites, they, <laughs> they eat a lot. They eat a lot. <laughs> and then they poop, lots and lots of poop. And so when you see dust floating around your house, most of it is actually dust mite poop. And oh you're my. breathing that in. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. So so how do we get rid of this out of the air? Because, you know, we can't really get rid of the dust mites, and we're certainly not going to suddenly go to dirt floors and, you know, open huts anytime soon. So um, the thing is, is that when you go outside, there is enough humidity to cause all that dust to actually fall down to the ground. It creates a natural filter system. So the key is to keep your humidity up in your house. 
And people often will say, well, how about my diffuser? Is that enough? No, it's not. You're going to need to, first off, purchase a humidifier for your bedroom. If you can only get one and you can only put it in one place, put it in your bedroom and run it at night while you're sleeping. We spend an incredible amount of time in our bedrooms. And this will help you breathe better. You're going to want to use eucalyptus oil and maybe a little lavender in there. You can also rub a drop of eucalyptus oil on your hands and rub your hands together and breathe that in. Cover your face and nose and breathe that in like a natural inhaler anywhere you go. That'll stop the coughing as well. You'll find that your cough will go away quite quickly if you up the humidity of your house. And then um, I like to then move my humidifier uh, out into the living room when I'm in the living room. So if I'm at home, there's going to be humidity running. And for those of you who don't have access to a humidifier right away, a pot on a stove on low, hot enough that it'll steam, can do that for you too. So, of course, be careful because once it runs out of water, then it's just going to sit there being really super hot. So this is very important. We need to bring humidity back as a filter in our homes, and then you're going to see a very big shift in the asthmatic issues, the coughing, the irritation, and the, and the allergies for everybody across the board. And then the other thing is with the throat. The throat is the bridge between the brain and the heart. And so when we speak, if we only are speaking from the mind, the voice is actually a lot tighter, and the the throat itself feels tighter, and it feels more high-pitched when you're only speaking from the brain. What you want to do instead is, before you begin to communicate, allow your thoughts to drop down into the heart, and then speak from there. There's more depth and richness behind someone's voice when they're speaking from the heart. This allows the voice itself to do its spiritual job to act as a bridge between the brain and the heart. And it feels more comfortable and looser and much more genuine when you get to speak that way. So it's very important to practice that mindfully until your body gets used to it and does it on its own naturally. So those are the two, the two things, both spiritual and mental and also physical that I think would be most useful to you, Belinda. Well, yes, that sounds good. And I have, I do have a wood stove, which I have a pot of water on. Great. But mm-hmm. maybe that isn't enough. Yeah, it I, might be, yeah, it might not be enough. Yeah. And I do have an yeah. air purifier, but I, I mean, I've tried all this stuff, but I, and I do have the oils that you just mentioned. I mean, I, and I'm into that and I make inhalers and all that. So Absolutely. I, I will do that some more because I think maybe I don't use that enough. Um, yes. Okay. Well, that, good. That sounds wonderful. I knew you'd have answers for me. So thank you so Sure, much. no problem, Belinda. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Belinda. Okay. Oh, well, all right. Baggage. Any baggage. Is there <laughs> any experience that you would like on an emotional clearing or a timeline loop, a time loop that you would like yeah. Elizabeth to help you clear? That's who we're going to go to. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to call on someone with a timeline loop or a time loop or or, or experiences Mm -hmm. that they want help clearing with. We're going to go to, uh, it looks like Joe on the web call from Seattle. Hi, Joe. Do you have some baggage you want Elizabeth to help you with? Hi, Uh, Joe. Hey, you can hear me? Yes. Yes. Good, good. Uh, So I have a lot of issues with a lack of self-worth. It's causing a lot of addictive behaviors and judgments of others. It's really just kind of beating myself up, so I put it out on others. Yeah, yeah. I've been doing that for a long time, since I was a kid, you know. Yeah, and you're wearing armor too, Joe. Yeah. You're trying to recycle your heart energy, man. It's not going to (laughs) work. You're going to get exhausted. Yeah. Let me help you. So a lot of men wear armor because they're taught to, 
and they don't um, know that their power center is their heart. The masculine power center in the masculine embodiment is the heart. The upper body is much larger in the masculine, and then the power center of the feminine is the root. So your heart, what you're doing is you're trying to protect, of course, your heart because what happens when bad stuff goes on or somebody yells at you or something like that, right? You feel it first in the heart and then your brain reacts because the heart's the first responder. He's creating that field around you. And what you've done is you've compressed your field so densely around your embodiment and then literally created spiritual armor to try to protect yourself and this is going to cause you to just run out of steam super fast and just be exhausted with life Mm -hmm. and then of course what happens you start really hating on yourself and then projecting it out so let's get rid of the armor number one and number two whenever you have a judgment or any kind of program Mm -hmm. run self-hatred program that little voice in the head that says oh joe you're just a loser or whatever you want to bow to it bow to it it sounds like the opposite that you'd want to do to something that's telling you that it hates you but what it does to the brain when you bow to it it actually pauses it the brain isn't expecting you to come at it with gratitude so it pauses the program, and then you can unprogram it, basically, and, and reprogram it. So this is what it sounds like. You hear the little program run, oh, Joe, you're just a whatever. Thank you very much for trying to help me. I require you to shut down now. I'm the soul in charge, and I have a different plan. My plan is to stay focused and present right now. Or, my plan is to be happy. It doesn't have to be a complicated plan. Just anything else that you're wanting in that moment. And then, Joe, you got to take a deep breath. Now, this sounds like a really, you know, intense process. And, yeah, it is. You're going to have to do this a lot at first. It's going to be, you know, a bazillion times a day at first. And then, day by day, it's going to be less and less and less. This really, really works. If you're consistent about it, you can do it quite quickly. Thank you very much. Uh, I require you to shut down now. I'm in charge and I have a different plan. Again and again and again. This will literally rewire the synapses of your brain and you won't be running those judgment, self-hatred programs anymore. This is important because you have control over your synapses much more so than it might seem. And then lastly, Joe, when it comes down to it, the fact that you're going to want to practice playing with your heart energy. You're in, you're in this masculine embodiment. You're here to help to rebuild this planet. The physical ability of the masculine is so key. And I'm going to say something really crazy, Joe, that you've probably never heard. That men have been harmed by these power systems as much as women. Men have been hurt and harmed as much as women have. And the acknowledgement of masculine suffering is very, very important right now. Especially from the feminine because the feminine is an important bridge. The divine feminine can be a bridge to unity so that the masculine and feminine can function together. Does this make sense so far, Joe? Yeah, I'm right on point with all this stuff. It's great. Okay, awesome. Now let me show you how to get rid of your armor. Um, and so if if anyone's listening and you feel that you're wearing armor, man or woman, doesn't matter, do this with us now. I want you to envision this armor. It's quite heavy looking. It's metal, but it buckles just like any classic armor. And the buckles tend to be on the shoulders. So I want you to l- close your eyes, Joe, and pretend that you're unbuckling the armor. Start on the left side and just pretend. Pretend you're unbuckling it. Good. And now do it on the right side. And now it's loose and I'd like you to take a deep breath and let it just fall off. There. There it just went. Mm -hmm. Good. Excellent. Now we're going to command your heart energy. Now I want you to go ahead and put your hand on your heart and repeat after me. Dear heart. 
Please lift any dark or dense energy. Please lift any dark or dense energy? Yes. Any negative programs? Any negative programs? Any trauma? Any trauma? Any negative emotions? Any negative emotions? And any other armor? And any other armor? Up, down, or out? Up, down, or out? Of my whole body and field now? Of my whole body and field now? And take a big deep breath. Good. And now let's replace that. We're going to replace it so it doesn't come back. And we'll say, dear heart. Dear heart. Fill my whole body and field. Fill my whole body and field. With the power of unconditional love now. With the power of unconditional love now. And take another deep breath. Good. You look totally different now. <laughs> so can you feel how much larger you are? You're not compressed down anymore. Don't let yourself compress anymore, Joe. It doesn't matter who is around you. Do not compress to make other people happy. Never compress your energy. You're the influencer in that room every time. And you have an incredibly powerful heart. Use it to your advantage to create things in this 3D world that will be of benefit to, of course, the whole world and yourself. Don't stop creating. The masculine ability to create in the 3D is incredibly amazing. And you can weave energy from the heart into whatever you make. Now, why did we pick unconditional love to replace that energy? Because unconditional love is highly protective. It's, it works as a better shield than any armor. And here's why. If you're standing in this an energy of unconditional love and we have somebody in front of you who's yelling at you perhaps and they, they're upset or something, right? Mm -hmm. They're throwing all this energy at you. It's going to move around you so that you can actually continue to stay objective. If you're standing in unconditional love and you're looking at that person, you're seeing that they're suffering. They're suffering. And that's the truth. And that is going to help you to be able to approach without reaction. Instead, you're going to approach with a very well thought out plan to either alleviate the situation or decide to go ahead and leave. Either way, you're not going to be damaged or allow any of that negative stuff to come in and attach itself to you. No, no. So right. that's really key. And then, of course, make sure you're commanding dense energy out of your way. But it, here's the cool part about this practice is anything goes. So if you have physical issues like pain or if you're feeling depressed, if you feel anxiety or you're having trouble with focus one day and you feel cloudy, if you have maybe, you know, you stubbed your toe, <laughs> anything goes. So you can shift pain out of the body. You can ask for the depression to lift. You can ask for any cloudy, foggy stuff from the brain to lift. Anything goes. And then, of course, you're always going to replace it with some quality of light, either unconditional love or any of the, of course, millions of wonderful qualities of light available, joy, etc. And, and as for the addiction part, this is very important, and I think that it needs to be deeply addressed because we have a very weird approach to addiction. When someone is in a state of addiction, they are feeling a lack of source energy. So they're trying to replace it. They're in a dark hole, and they feel like there's no light that can get to them. Even though that's an illusion, you didn't ever leave the source field. So you keep trying to bring in some kind of light with substances that human beings often have had incredibly long relationships with. And there's a spectrum of these substances which we utilize a lot. And on one end, it's honey and chocolate 
and then it gets into things like tobacco, beer and wine. Hard alcohol doesn't count because we don't, that's very, that's very new in human evolution. But beer and wine, that's not new at all. That's been around for tens of thousands of years. And then we've got things like marijuana, we've ephedra, poppy seeds. And then you get into the more intense stuff, psychedelics like psilocybin and ayahuasca, peyote, etc. All of these are communions with the earth. Tobacco, for example, people smoke a lot and they say, I just wish I could quit smoking. And I say, well, how do you feel every time you smoke a cigarette? I feel guilty. My goodness. <laughs> that beautiful tobacco plant was used in ancient ritual to open ourselves up to receive incredible light from the galaxy and from the earth. It transforms the mindset. So does chocolate. So does honey. It transforms your mind. And when you transform your mind and you open up to whatever the earth and the galactic cosmos wants to offer you, then that's incredible. That's a wonderful gift. And that tobacco is opening that person up as they're smoking it. And, you know, and most of the time, that's not going to be pure tobacco. Now it's been run through all these systems of profit. So it's pretty nasty stuff at this point. But nonetheless, the tobacco is still doing that, opening that person up. And what do they then bring in to receive? Guilt. And then this just causes more density and more separation. So every time all these folks end up, you know, saying, I drink too much wine, I smoke too much weed, every time I do it, I feel guilty. That's exactly the opposite of what these communions with the earth were meant to be used for. Ancient humans used all of these things in ancient ritual and very special times to open themselves up with great preparation. They smoked that tobacco. With great preparation, they consumed that chocolate or that honey and all of these other medicines, these communions. They opened themselves up to something spectacular, but they used it in a very sacred way. So how can we help with the addiction piece? Each time that you get to partake of something that is part of this natural stuff, and I'm not talking about the new drugs like methamphetamines or cocaine or anything like that. That's, that doesn't count. Neither does the heart A. That stuff's all new, so it doesn't have the same effects on the body or the mind as these communions with the earth. If people have addictions to those particular things, then they definitely are going to want to try to go get medical help because it is a medical issue at that point. In this case, then, if we have all these other items that we're looking at and we partake of them in a sacred way and we prepare ourselves with great gratitude to drink that glass of wine or what, whatever, to eat that piece of chocolate, incredible gratitude, opening up to the earth and to the cosmos in a sacred space to receive what you need. And then, at that point, you can command any density out that is not serving you. And then I like to say, especially if I'm craving it and I don't want to partake, if I'm craving that wine, I love my wine, <laughs> if I'm craving it and I don't want to partake, then I just ask and command that craving out of my body using that same technique. Dear heart, please shift this craving out of my body my body and field now, and then I'll breathe, and then I'll say, Dear heart, please fill my body and field with nourishing and satisfying light now. And then I'll take another deep breath, and then I'll go drink a glass of water, and then the craving's gone. And that glass of water helps all that nourishing and satisfying light to be received by the cells more easily. So this is my approach to addiction. It's completely different than any other approach because I come at it from an anthropological point of view. Does this make sense and sound helpful to you, Joe? Yes, it does. Thank you. Brilliant. I'm very glad to help. Great. Excellent. Beautiful. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, Joe. Yep. Um, that's a beautiful reminder not to be guilty or feel guilty, right? I love that approach to addiction no matter if it's chocolate or honey 
or wine or what have you. Okay. Yes. Beautiful. And that is how we command our energy. So we're going to go back and we're going to help others command their energy with some examples. But let's do something for the group here. Can you feel into our group and empower us to command our energy for our passion, for living our passion, clearing out any obstacles that might be blocking us from living and living fully into our dream? Beautiful. Beautiful. Yes, I'd love to. Thank you. Give me one moment as I get to tap into everybody here. Mm, beautiful. All right, so if everyone would repeat out loud if you can, and if you can't, just do it inside your mind. That works too. And we'll say, Dear Heart, please lift any dark or dense energies, any obstacles in my way. Please shift any ancient and genetic Densities that don't belong to me. Please move any energies that are the collectives and do not belong to me. And please move anything out of my whole body and field that is keeping me from tapping in to my creative potential. Up, down, or out of the whole body and field now. And take a deep breath. And then we'll say, Dear Heart, please fill my whole body and field with the light of creativity, joy, humor, objectivity, and oneness. Now, we'll take another deep breath. So those particular energies were what was needed at the moment. I love that humor and joy came through. Humor and joy really keep us um, in a space where we can take the world a little less seriously. A lot of folks, like I said, are getting called out to the front lines to be practitioners or to fight a good fight for something that they believe in, a cause, and it can be a little depressing out there on those front lines. And so don't forget to bring in all that joy and humor. It's very healing, and it helps us to tap into an incredible amount of light. Objectivity, too, can protect us because nothing is ever as it seems, and there's always much more to discover, many, many facets and points of view around even a single subject. And with thousands of points of view on one subject, it can be very confusing. So staying objective and not letting yourself get caught up into things that might not be as they seem, especially, for example, with economics, excuse me, economics, financial stuff, and political stuff. That's often the biggest triggers for folks. And then, of course, creative light. Creative light is the co-creative energy from nature. Nature is constantly creating and recycling and using every medium possible to create reality and scales of reality. And you, of course, are part of those scales of reality. All the little cells of your body are quite smart. And I like to point out that one single strand of DNA has more capacity for information than all the computers on the planet combined. That's just one single strand of your DNA. So you are a really amazing, intelligent, living being that has a symbiotic relationship with many other beings. And they're all creating too. And this is infinite amount of energy to tap into. And then we tackled especially any ancient stuff, any collective stuff. I think people are going to start to find, Loren, that more and more and more they tap into the collective unified mind of humanity as one species and that the Earth's magnetic field allows this, especially now. It's super busy at the moment, moving around, apparently going closer to Siberia at the moment. 
Um, but the electromagnetic field around the planet is also the same kind of field that we have around our bodies. So it makes sense that we'd naturally get to connect to one another. But you know what? With all those billions of people, and most of them in some kind of suffering, that's not always that fun to tap into. But I like to point out to people, take a chance every day to zoom out a little bit. Check in with humanity like a friend and say, hey, humanity, how are you doing? Let me give you an energetic hug. I'm going to throw you a beautiful blessing. And then zoom back into your momentary, you know, 3D life in the moment there. And I think that people will find that the pressure relieves a little bit and that the gift you can give to the collective every day can make a big difference in all of us trying to reach more formless freedom. So I think that's really special, and I, I really am excited for the creative potential that everyone has, all these wonderful folks listening. And I can also sense all the those that might be listening later on um, to the call, too. So that will be useful. Use that particular command for a little while and see how it serves you. Beautiful. Yes, okay. Powerfully commanding our reality. And so it's so fun to see you working with others and helping command. And what I've learned by doing these calls is that our group that shows up, it helps each other. Everyone is helped when we do this work together. And so, you know, as you were helping Joe there, that helped so many of us as well. And it's a beautiful example of how we command it. So thank you for that. It really is very empowering. We can feel that. Okay, so we're going to take a couple more callers before we end our show. But before we get there, I want to give you a moment to talk about how you work with people. As we can see, you can hone right in and you can help dismantle programs, get rid of blockages, and you actually are quite busy. You are a busy, busy person (laughs) in high demand, and so you've got a package and an offering where people can work with you. You're doing it now in smaller groups where it is intimate, and it's a group of no more than six, and that provides, again, that group synergy where what you do for one person helps the other five people in that group. And so this is a way that people can work with you in a great setting, in an immediate setting, um, to get their questions and the work done with you. It's almost like we're we're cloning you by putting people in in this group session, right? They're able to pack their time with you. And so that's what you offer. But you've also got these beautiful teachings available in your special offer, and those are online healing retreats that we've done. So talk a little bit about how people work with this special offer. Yeah, the group calls are profound because you get two, and each one you get a 20-minute reading. And I and I especially wanted to make sure everybody got two so that they could have a follow-up on that issue later on and extra help if needed or get a chance to ask another question. And it's in 20 minutes, we can get a ton done. People are always surprised at how much we get done in 20 minutes. But furthermore, I'm a little different with my group calls because I know I'm not the only wise person around. And pretty much everyone who gets onto a specific call is divinely led to be on that particular call with that particular group every time. It's mm-hmm. quite amazing, actually, to watch it's quantum. that quantum. It's totally quantum. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And so what I allow, too, is feedback from the rest of the group because there might be some ideas and thoughts that came through from source um, for that person that came through other people than me. And that's amazing. Then you get all this extra feedback a lot of times. And furthermore, you get to stand in a space of fully being witnessed. And that itself is so profoundly magical to help you shift whatever you're trying to shift or open up or get the answers you need. So that's why I really love group calls. Also, it's faster to work with me with a group call than it would be, say, to have a one-on-one at this point. 
So I think that's also why I wanted to make sure people had those group calls. Um, and then we have, of course, an entire year's worth of special calls with my circle. It's just everybody getting together once a month to check in, and it's a special call that we can gather together every month. You get to check in and get an energy update, talk about where you're at, maybe get a little um, support and advice. Other people get to chime in. It's very friendly with a lot of awakened people. There's a lot of folks who are really lonely out there. They, you know, they're out there and they're, I a lot of times hear them say, well, you're the only person I've been able to talk to about this subject. <laughs> well, it turns out that pretty much everybody's saying that, which means that we should all get together and talk about this subject. <laughs> so that's going to be really special. A whole year's worth of calls is, is excellent. And then I've packed in everything that I taught from this past year into this offer, and it's a huge amount of information I've got teachings around quantum healing and remote viewing, the science of ascension, those fields of limitation we were talking about, and the fields of limitlessness. I talk about the concept of the 12-dimensional body. I help people tap into what are soul skill sets and how do you develop them, and also full body discernment. How do you make choices with your whole body, not just your brain, but your brain, your heart, and your gut. It's a very systematic approach that I have that gives you the chance to really feel that you have the clear answers you need and not feel like you got to depend on someone outside yourself. I'm really interested in making sure that people don't need me. I would love to one day not have to work because then everybody on the planet's enlightened. I don't think that'll happen in my lifetime yet. I'm still going to make sure that anyone who comes my way gets to have all of those pieces that they really need so that they don't have to depend on anyone else, that they can co-create and collaborate with others instead of depending on them. If for, for example, healing. So I think that's really important. Empowerment is key. And then I also have, uh, in part, as part of this offer, sent with everyone, of course, lots of wonderful music from my husband, Bioluminescent. And he has a lot of really excellent music that I love. It's very expansive. So there's some really special pieces here, incredible amounts of learning to be done in this special offer, and I'm really excited about it. Then we also have, um, in a different portion, a different offer, the all the new stuff that I'm doing. <laughs> so mm -hmm. then, of course, there's the class I just taught called the Equations of Enlightenment, that there's actual real equations that you can use to help you to become more formless and to continue to work towards that state that we call enlightenment. And I really love that. And then this month I'm going to be teaching Soul Skills 101, really getting down to the foundation of soul skills and how each of us can tap into them, no matter what your soul skills are. You can tap into all the different skills and be able to utilize them for, for your work and your life. And that's what we'll be talking about this month. And next month is the Playground of Time. I have a very particular way that I work with time. And I really want to share it because I think it's really valuable to helping people to use all their power in the moment where all the action is to put velocity behind the timelines they want that will occur because they actually created it in the moment. So as a psychic, everyone often asks me, well, can you tell me what's going to happen in the future? And I say, well, yes, if I was a bad psychic, I would totally pick a random timeline. <laughs> and tell you that was what's going to happen. But that's not who I am. I'm a seer. I'm an oracle. When I look at the future, I see billions of timelines. And it's up to us in the moment to be able to manifest that timeline that we want, put power behind the one that we want. Because if we were able to know every part of the future, then we wouldn't have free will. And we wouldn't get to enjoy linear time. Everybody likes to beat up on linear time. And I'm trying to show people that it's an incredible gift. 
and that you're here to help further the greatest experiment, which is this universe. And this universe, this experiment is the discovery of what is love. And each of us are part of that experiment, discovering what is love. Source needs us. Source needed an entire universe to answer that question. Certainly there's other universes answering other questions. But this one, this one's all about love. So I want people to be able to feel like they can actually use that in time. Use all that power in the moment. And that's what we'll be looking at in March. So, of course, that leads us to more work that I'm doing <laughs> over the next year. A really excellent, higher level mastery of the multidimensional applied world. Because we're applying all this stuff into real time, into the 3D. And I want to help people organize that information and make sure that they can use it to their advantage to create, co-create, collaborate, and learn about love. That's my goal. Yes, that is beautiful. So if that is the goal of anyone listening, which I know it is, that's what we're here for. We know in our heart of hearts that that is why we came to this incarnation at this time. And so those are beautiful offerings and teachings that you have. And I just want to clarify there, Elizabeth, the upcoming webinars that you've got, uh, those are called Mastery Empowerment Courses for New Earth. That is something that we're doing new here at AcousticHealth.com because it really is time to be empowered with our mastery and we're doing it for New Earth. So we invite our participants listening to this episode to check out the Mastery Empowerment course. There's three webinars that Elizabeth is going to do. One of them is already for instant access. That is the Equation of Enlightenment. So there is a button for the Mastery Empowerment courses. And then there is also the special offer with those beautiful recorded teachings the live group calls, get your 20-minute, two 20-minute questions answered, uh, and get that personal time with Elizabeth. And, of course, those monthly Sacred Circle meetings. Again, these are just special ways to be part of that group synergy. It's really magic what happens. Um, we see lots of friendships spring out of that. Yeah, People make those true. connections, right? People are like, oh, my God. And I just witnessed this over this past weekend. People really, there was a mother, she was a mother going through a divorce with daughter, and then someone else completely different, a daughter with a mother going through a divorce. And the two of those people, they did not know each other, but they came together to support each other in just beautiful, miraculous ways. And it was almost oh, yes. they were a mirror for each other. And that's what happens in these group calls. And so I thank you for creating that and making that available. Uh, it's beautiful for anyone to join with that. I'm so yeah. Yes, great. Thank you. All right. So to wrap this up, I want to give you another moment <laughs> to Absolutely. assist with any timeline shifts or Density drops from anyone who needs it. So we're going back to our phone line. And this is for dropping, getting out of timeline loops. So we're going to Denver, Colorado. Phone number ending in 2048. Hi, do you have a question regarding getting out of a timeline loop for Elizabeth? Hello. Hi. Is it me? Hi. It's you. Oh, What's huh. your name, please? <laughs> Yay! Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, uh, Lauren. Hi. It's wonderful to speak with you. I'm not sure if this is a timeline loop. Um, I, it's interesting the other callers were talking about heart and throat chakras. I feel like my biggest blockage is between there more with my throat chakra and uh, being able to communicate more, I'm, and as I think back on it, I think, you know, it, it stems from rejection from mom and... Yeah, um, I immediately see and, a frozen child there. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and constantly being, you know, not listened to. So, and I, and I acknowledge it, uh, and I feel like it, I'm working on it, but I sure would like to get through this a little bit quicker since I've been dealing with it for so long. Yeah, I got you covered. All right, so here's the deal. When we deal with these different frozen versions of us, they didn't really go anywhere. What's your name, by the way? Joy. Joy. Okay, Joy. So there's a little Joy stuck in your subconscious, and her main thing has to do, obviously, with this, with being able to be heard, among other things. And so she's bugging you through the throat. She's trying to get your attention. And so now she has it. She has your attention, and you're aware of her. And you've been acknowledging her, but we actually need to take her on an entire an entire journey. So I'd like to have you go ahead and really do some work with her, among other frozen selves. And you can systematically approach this. I highly recommend making sure that you approach your newborn self as well. Um, I didn't do that with my newborn self for many, many years, even though I'd covered everybody else. And I still had all this fight or flight in my body. And all the fight or flight was coming from my newborn self, and I couldn't hear her in my subconscious. So I didn't realize that she was upset because she couldn't talk. So make sure you do address that, because when I finally did heal her, um, I, that fight or flight went away. So that's very important. Now, of course, you can address many different parts of the self throughout time. Whomever really needs to be addressed first is probably going to pop up, so you might be bouncing around. That's okay. So with this little version of you, you're going to ask yourself a series of questions. First, it'll be, well, what does this little version of me wear? What is she wearing? And that seems like an odd question to ask. But it's actually um, very important because it helps you separate yourself from her a little bit. We need that separation in this time. So you'll ask, what is that little me? What's little Joy wearing? How old is she maybe? And then you'll ask little Joy, dear little Joy, will you come and speak with me? And so she might come and sit with you or she might come sit near you. And then you're going to ask her, little Joy, what exactly do you need? And she's going to list off several things. Now, notice that we're not going into her trauma. In fact, I don't recommend going into her trauma. In fact, that's the whole point. We're trying to take her out of the timeline so that the charge can come off of that timeline. We're not going to erase the timeline. We're going to create a little branch off the side where she can live in a new place and be satisfied and get her needs met. And then you'll be able to approach the trauma that happened to you with a lot less charge on it and value it. I really deeply value all the crazy stuff I've been through now and because it helps me with my compassion and my empathy, among other things. A great amount of wisdom can come from that. But it's really hard to get that wisdom out when it's all traumatized and painful. So you're going to say to her, all right, little Joy, now we know exactly what you need. Where shall we go to go get these needs met? Now, here's the fun part, because you and little Joy are going to imagine a completely brand new situation. And this is where it gets interesting, because you can do anything. For example, I've had people take their little child self to a completely different planet. <laughs> I've had them take their little child self and take them to the Pleiades and give them a Pleiadian a Pleiadian set of parents that would really listen to them and allow them allow that little self to be exactly who they needed to be and receive what they needed, or a magical place here on Earth where all the needs can be met. For example, I had a lovely woman who took her beautiful self to a, a cabin on a lake with some brand new friends and she just had a wonderful time playing and, and being able to just be a kid and be completely herself, fully safe and loved out in nature. Or another lady, her little child self, she had a hard time with food. She was denied a lot of food, so food control was a serious issue for her. So we put this most magnificent picnic out on a beach 
with every tiny little detail all accounted for. And that's a key point. Don't miss out on the details. Exactly how many strawberries are in that bowl? Exactly what type of bread will we be eating with our cheese? And then, of course, anything else goes. So the surroundings are very important. We got to go into a little cabin for one woman, a little cabin just for her, and we picked out the exact color of the drapes, and we even knew exactly what color the dog bed would be in the living room, all down to the little details. Now, then you get to enjoy this beautiful place together for a little while, and when that version of you begins to feel better, then you get to ask the very best question, would you like to stay here? And, of course, that version of you is certainly going to say yes. So let's say maybe she'd like to have the same mother, but a more awakened version of that same mother. And a different home, but with the same mom that has finally awoke and is able to fully listen so she can receive from that mother energy, but be able to have what she needed. So, you know, or a completely different set of parents, or just simply mother divine and father divine. So whatever she needs can be met. It doesn't matter where it's going to be or how exactly it's met. It just matters that it's met. And this can take a little time, obviously, because, you know, you're probably going to do this for up to about a half hour or so per version of you that you're working with. But get started with that little joy who's stuck in her throat and isn't able to speak because no one's listening. No one really values what she's saying. She needs a new place to be where she can have all of her needs met. Does this make sense? Yes, I think it's a, you know, everybody says work with your inner child. Well, how? So this is a wonderful uh, exercise to play with. Yes. It's profound. And, and, and you know what's the best part, Joy, is that you're going to have some amazing physical measurable results in this. Your throat's going to stop feeling so dense. You're not going to feel like all those parts of you are still needing what they need. You'll be able to be more present. You'll be able to feel more free and a lot lighter. And you'll be able to really see the difference in your body. Wonderful. I look forward to that. Awesome. Have some fun. Thank you. <laughs> Good. You're very Beautiful. Well. Thank you, Joy. Thank you, thank you. Okay, well, this has been a really informative call, witnessing how we can command our energy. So, Elizabeth, as we say goodbye, is there anything that you'd like to add as we close our sacred circle and go forth with a bold, new, empowering attitude? Yeah, absolutely. First and foremost, what's going on with the planet right now is so brand new. So if you feel confused and you're not sure and you are hoping that everything's going to somehow, quote unquote, get back to normal, it's not. <laughs> it's not, and it's new. There really isn't any special, uh, you know, ancient book we can go to at this point because we're in such a brand new field of time and space, literally. And with that, that's okay. That means that we're all forerunners. We're all forerunners. We're the ones creating the new ancient book. And we're the ones who are going to be embodying all these dimensions, not just reaching them with our minds, but embodying them. It's no longer that we're only going to attain enlightenment in the mind. It is now... A reset, a full reset of the experiment here on Earth to embody all of these higher dimensions in the 3D. We're not leaving anything behind. We're getting, getting ready to gain a whole lot and still be able to access all of this in the material. And how can we make sense of this? Make sure that you're tapping into your heart and your gut. Talk to those two brains. Talk to them every day. They're going to serve you on this journey, and they are there to help you organize the information that's coming in from Source and from Earth 
and from the collective. And as we get going on this journey, we're going to be seeing incredible global changes and human beings will be coming into a state of unity where we'll be able to move forward to be the great emissaries of compassion and love that we are called to be. That is the outcome that we're shooting for. So if you feel like all this is super strange and you're not sure, so does everyone else, including me. (laughs) So we're all in it together here, and whenever we ask the Mother Earth, what can I do for you, a lot of times her answer is, just hang on for the ride, dear. And so (laughs) trust her. Trust Mother Earth. She knows where she's going. She knows what she's doing. She's helping shift density, and we can utilize that as well if we're willing to just be one with her and be open to what she's doing in space and time. So that's the last message. I just wanted to give people a shout-out. Good job. We're all here doing it together now. We're all on the edge together, and we're going to find out Mm -hmm. what this is all about. (laughs) Good job. Good job. Good job. Yes, and we can, this is why as well, we hold our vision of new earth always, always, always. It will come about. It's already been created. So everyone, good job. Elizabeth, good job. Thank you Thank so you. much for this Lauren, beautiful time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yes, okay. we just feel Mother Earth and we are here and holding on and um, bringing forth this incredible love, the essence of love for just being here and being present and enjoying the ride. <laughs> thank, you. thank you, Elizabeth. Big hug to you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, Doug. <laughs> awesome. Well, again, if you'd like to check out Elizabeth Wood's teachings and enjoy the time with her, interfacing with her, it is very powerful. She is a very popular healer, and her special offer is available on this webpage. And, of course, the Mastery Empowerment course awaits you as well. Thank you, everyone. Now it is time to dance our way to the cosmic heart, and we do so with a little fun, a little movement. Enjoy.
you for listening to this quantum conversation and thank you for dancing with us to the cosmic heart. As we raise our own vibration, we raise the vibration of the planet. This show is dedicated to you and all awakening hearts as we are here to shine our bright light and amplify our love. Access all quantum conversations special offers from our guests, and online healing retreats by visiting AcousticHealth.com. I'm Loren Gailey, and from my sacred heart to yours, I honor your magnificent love and light. We leave you now with music from the universe. Music literally created by the universe as musical notes were assigned to mathematical equations. The result is this beautiful music, available at AcousticHealth.com. Namaste. Namaste.